welcome back to my studio for another acrylic paint tutorial. If you're new and just stopping by now, my name is Joni Young and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be painting the Frog Princess. I'm really excited about showing you guys step by step how to paint this yourselves. And I'm just going to go over the paint I'm using today, all the colors and the canvas. Starting off with an 11 by 14 double primed and stretched canvas. I have the following colors, light olive green, phthalo blue, Neon Rose, Burnt Sienna, Dioxazine Purple, Titanium White, Turquoise Aqua Green, Neon Cool Yellow, and Neon Pink. Check out the full list below this video in the description box. What I'm going to do first is just wet my canvas down with a bit of water. I'm going to use my number 30 filbert brush to start. So just adding a little bit of water to the canvas will really help the canvas take your acrylics and it'll go on a lot more smoothly. So this is one of those big little tips. Okay, this is gonna really, really help you guys paint better with your acrylics if you're just starting out and wondering how do you blend them so easily, this is the trick. Now be careful you don't add too much water. If it's dripping, then it's way too much. Just dab off the excess with a little uh, towel or wait for a few minutes for it to kind of soak in a little bit. Okay, so now I'm ready to add the first color. And the first color is gonna be yellow. And I'm just gonna add it right in the center here. And the second color is neon pink. I'm gonna take the neon pink, apply it on either side of the yellow. And I'm gonna start working my way out towards the outer edges of the canvas. The next color I'm gonna take is Neon Rose. Each time I add a new color, I'm slightly overlapping where I left off. Okay, the next color, Phthalo Blue. Okay, now before that can dry too much, I'm gonna take one of my dry mop brushes. I've been getting so many questions about how to use a mop brush and why you guys can't get this soft blended look. Make sure that you're using a dry mop brush. You're not putting it in water first. All you're doing is taking just a little bit of white and you're just gonna go in the center, right in the yellow area and then just soften very lightly over the wet paint. And then I'm going to take a little bit more white. I'm going to take a little, just dab into a little bit of that blue and rose, white, blue and rose. And I'm going to start tapping a few little branches here. Then I'll take a little bit of white. Get a little bit extra paint on your brush this time. Then add a little bit of this to your branches. This will make it dry a really nice soft color. Okay, then I'm gonna rinse that brush out. I'm gonna Quickly go back over to my blue and I'm going to take some turquoise next. So my 30 filbert brush has a little bit of blue in it and turquoise now. And I'm just going to go right across here. This is our horizon line right there. And the rest is just going to be water. So you're gonna take a little bit of turquoise, a little bit of blue again, and you're just gonna pull down and across. Add a 
little bit more water to your brush if you need it and I do so I just added a little bit more I've got my fireplace on in my studio it's a little bit chilly in here so I hope you guys don't mind the little bit of noise the fan makes on it I'll shut it off in a minute when it warms up in here Okay, now I'm going to take a little bit more blue and I want it to be gradually get a little bit darker. Now I love all things Disney and I get really excited when I get requests like this. not something I paint a lot. I like to pretty much paint from imagination, um, but I'm not making this up. I'll exaggerate it and, and do what I can to make it my own, but it's really inspired by the Disney movie and lots of pictures I've been looking at. I'm taking extra turquoise now, and I'm just gonna sweep just below that horizon line and then take some white and pull that in right up to the horizon line. Let me get just a little bit brighter. We know it'll dry darker, acrylic paint does. Okay, now I'm gonna wash my brush out. And what I'm going to do is take a little bit of purple, a little bit of purple on the end of my brush like this, and all we're going to be doing is just going up and down, leaving some spaces for some tree trunks. These are just way in the distance in the background. And some of them are reflecting in the water. So you just pull them down and then go right over them. And I'm going to increase the amount I'm adding now. I'm going to continue pulling these down, going across, giving the water a lot more depth while doing this and a really dreamy kind of a look. Okay, then I'm just gonna take a little bit more purple and I'm just gonna tap, tap, tap for some denser looking branches on these trees. And I'm just gonna take a tiny bit of this light olive green, mix it in with a little bit of that purple. It's gonna bring a nice earthy balance to all these colors. And I'm gonna add little hints of this in here. Some little loops to start adding some pretty little water lilies that we're gonna have in here. I'm going to take one of my flat brushes and I'm going to take a little bit of turquoise and I'm going to add it to some of these tree trunks back here. You can add a few more tree trunks. You can take a little bit of blue in there with some white. You can really get away with a lot of color, obviously with Disney types of paintings. I think that's what makes them so fun. You just go wild with color. 
washed my brush off. I'm going back over a little bit of white and yellow. And we're gonna add it underneath here. So I'm just gonna lightly pull and flick just from this line right below the trees. Okay, so now that it's all dry, I'm gonna take my little brush again and I'm gonna take just a little bit of yellow, pink, and white. Just tint my white here. More yellow than pink though. And see, there's not a ton of paint on my brush. And all I'm gonna do is just go along and dry brush this over. I can do this without disrupting the paint underneath because of course we just dried it off. We're gonna give this a misty, magical, foggy feel. Now because I like sun rays so much, I'm gonna add a few sun rays. You just need a little bit extra water on your brush for adding the sun rays. Now a lot of my painting tutorials here and paintings in general have sun rays because I just love them and I think they're very magical. Okay so the next thing I'm going to do is start coming in with um, some of the water lilies here, ones in the background and for that I'm just going to start adding, we've got this first base layer here now the next color I want to add is turquoise and yellow. I'm going to take those two colors, a little bit of white, and I'll just start adding little flat ovals inside those larger ones. can add a little bit of to change up the color tone here and there so they're not all looking the same and think about where those sun rays are hitting the water really going to pick up some light there so you could add a little bit of white to your greens yellows Now with a clean brush, I'm going to take some black, or not black, purple. This is dioxazine purple. It sometimes looks black once it's dry, depending on what you add it over top of. And I'm going to go around, sort of outline. That's going to make them stand out a little bit more and look a little 3D. And then just add a little brush of purple here and there. So add a little bit more shadow depth in the water as well. And I'm going to start her figure Gonna start with her head and I'm going to be using a round brush. This is a number five but use any small brush that you're comfortable with. This is just what I have chosen and I'm going to start with some purple, a little bit of diox or dioxazine purple and burnt sienna. This will be a nice color for her hair and then the burnt sienna um, for her skin color. Her dress is going to come down to right about here in like a bell shape and then we'll have her waist and her head right here. So let's just start with the top of her bun. Let's round it out, make it a little circle and then come out on either side. A little bit wider at the top. So 
always best to do it small first and then come back and adjust it after, make it bigger. It's tougher to make things uh, uh, smaller if you've made them too big first. Okay, so her head's it's wider at the top and then it comes down narrow for her neckline. And then we've got her ears, so they come out on a slant, scoop and come around. Then we've got her neck, comes down here. She's slightly slanted in her, the way she's standing and, and turned just a little bit towards this way. And I'm gonna take some burnt sienna now, a little bit of white just to catch the light on that side. And then her shoulder, come down lower here and it's up a little bit higher here because of the angle she's on. I'm gonna take a little bit of white, mix that up with my burnt sienna again. This is just gonna make her skin, the paint go on a little bit better and look a little more creamy. Because the paint is looking a little streaky right now. So her right arm comes down a little bit and her left one slightly comes out slightly off to the left. This one just a little bit thicker. We can't see all of that one. We can see more of this right side. Again, because her head is turned. She's turned slightly. Okay, now I'm gonna take some more purple and make her hair darker. And this will separate her hair from the rest of her. Just outline her shoulder there. That's a little bit more in shadow. I'm going to take a little bit more white again and just right in here for the light you can just add a little triangle like that but I'm going to use a little liner brush to add a necklace and some earrings 
So got this mini liner brush and first I'll just add a little bit of white and yellow. And I'll just dab around, dab, dab, dab. And then take a little bit of purple and add that in a skinny little line or you can add it by tapping and dabbing as well. Cross her neck and then we'll give her some earrings. So we'll just add these little drop earrings. Okay, and I'm gonna go back over to my round brush and just make sure that I have her hair over the back side of her ears there. A little bit more burnt sienna. I've got a hint of purple on my brush still, or in my brush still, and I'm gonna come down in a V here. Because her dress, right, is gonna be there. And then a little bit of white, burnt sienna. The light is hitting part of her arm right in this section here. Add a little bit of light in between her arms. A little bit of burnt sienna and purple at the base of her neck there. And maybe a little ribbon in her hair. Maybe a little, we'll add that to her necklace too. A little bit of turquoise and yellow. Should match her dress, I think. Okay, so now we can start working on uh, the rest of her dress here. And I'm gonna be taking my turquoise and yellow. To come in here where that V is, bring that in, and then a few little lines that go across. And then here on this side, we're gonna see a little side of her chest and breast area because she's turned. And I'm gonna add a little bit of white to those colors because the light's gonna be hitting it. Same with over here. And then we've got her gloved hand and arm. So in the middle of the back of her arm, it goes up in a point like that. Then her arm, her elbow is gonna be right here, okay? So then her arm 
goes around here and her wrist turns around. A little bit of extra white and yellow. And now we're just going to have some light catching on that side. I'm going to go over her arm now. A little bit more those base colors, burnt sienna and purple. Take some more yellow and turquoise. We're going to bring this over because of the way she's standing. It's going to be more on an angle and exaggerated, slightly going over the back of her other arm. Okay, then I'm going to take, oh, let's see, a little bit of turquoise for the darker parts here. to her necklace and ribbon. Maybe a little bit to her earrings as well. Okay, then I'm going to take some yellow, turquoise, and white. And we can start the shape of her dress comes out on either side. Round, down, and then scoop out. And then we have another one. And then this one here. I'm going to switch over to a larger filbert brush. I've got a number 16. I'm going to get it a little bit wet. Take some white with my yellow and turquoise. I'm going to have a smaller one there. Comes out a little bit wider at the base of it. Her dress has just got this beautiful glow to it. And then we have 
have all these other petals in here. That will be more visible as we come in with some more color. a little bit of water. A little bit of extra white. So all those same colors, right? Just more white to really give these ones along the side, kind of partially in the front, glow a little bit more. Okay, and then I'm going to take my turquoise, a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow, and we'll start adding some more layers to her dress. Then we're going to add some reflections in the water. Now I'm going to use the yellow turquoise and white mixture and right underneath I'm going to wiggle under each one of the petals for her dress. I'm going to go back over to my round brush and I'm going to take some white. I'm going to start doing some outlining on some of these petals. A little bit of water in there to soften.
Take a little bit of burnt sienna in with my white. Just add a little bit more softness to her skin. I'm going to take a little bit more of that yellow and turquoise. It's a really beautiful spring green color. I'm take just a little bit of dioxazine purple to my turquoise, a little bit of light olive green, make it a few shades darker, a little bit of phthalo in there. I'm going to add a little triangle here, so a slant here, and then pull in. and across. A little line in there, there, her elbow. A little bit more of a shadow there. I think I'm going to add just a little lily pad around this area here. Maybe a few. We kind of lost some of them when we added the dress. Then back over to my yellow and white. Highlight. And then I'm going to take purple and go right underneath the dress. around this lily pad. Take a 
little bit more white. Re-highlight again. And then just under her arm, we'll add a little light and shimmer right there. Okay, I think we can start working on our stars now and um, water lilies. So start with the water lilies first. I'm gonna take some pink and white. I'm gonna need a little bit more of the yellow. So I'm going to take some more white, a little bit of neon yellow. Because we're applying this light, soft color, we really want it to glow. We're applying it over a dark base, a really dark base. So that's why you're going to need to be really generous with um, your white. So I'm just going to start by adding little dabs here and then softening with my finger. And we'll start to get those pretty little glowing effects. And then we can start on our water lilies as well. I like to just mix the paint up and twist and roll, get into a nice little point And then add a little push, let off for ones that haven't fully bloomed yet. And then we can add a little bit more little reflection here in the water. And then I like to just kind of create a, like a little bowl with the little pointy petals. We'll come in with um, shadow after. Probably have to add a little bit more white in there so that it dries nice and bright. Just gonna make that one a little bit wider. And then because it's glowing, I'll just add a little bit of light on the lily pads. And then you can go back in those little glowing stars. So the first thing you do, right, is just dab and soften with your finger. And then you go back and you add a tiny little dot inside that you don't blend. You want that to be really nice and bright. Okay, and then another little dab. Now you don't have to use straight white. You can tint your white by mixing any color you want it to be. So if you want purple, light purple, or pastel pink, pastel yellow, you name it, you can add that to your flowers. Okay, so I'm gonna add another little flower here. Push, wiggle, let off. Push, wiggle, twist and let off. Or start from the top, push, and let off. You want to make the one in the center a little bit taller. Add a little reflection in the water. Then I can come in and add a few more. Mix up a little bit more color here. 
Remember, be generous with your white. And then do the little bowl scoop. A little bit of light reflecting on the lily pad. They don't all have to be growing or resting on a lily pad. Some of them just come next to one and grow up beside them. I'm gonna add a little hint of pink in here. Maybe another little lily right there by her dress. And Some little ones here. Twist, dot, and dab. And then add a little glow a bit of a glow around them. I'm going to take a little bit of extra yellow and white. Dot and tab. Okay, well this painting is all done. This was so much fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, join Patreon if you want to help support what it is that I love to do, which is share my love of painting and help you guys learn how to um, get in touch with your inner artist that you never knew you had and help you guys just learn the basics of acrylics, use your imagination. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys soon in my next video. Bye!